Writers work in solitude. They're judged in solitude. Camus really believed in freedom. He was a writer for freedom. He was a journalist, enjoyed theater, which are themselves acts of freedom. Welcome to a new edition. I'm Nadia Shalbi, and this week we're putting the focus on Nobel Prize winning author Albert Camus. The 2020 saw France mark the 60th anniversary of his passing. Camus' seminal work, The Plague, was unexpectedly thrust back into the limelight by the COVID-19 pandemic. From the UK to Japan, this post-war novel became a global sensation, topping the sales charts and pushing publishers into a rushed reprint. But Camus' extensive and multifaceted career goes well beyond this viral comeback and began in the then French colony of Algeria. The story of one of the most celebrated French writers ever began here, in a working class neighborhood in Algiers. Albert Camus grew up there with his mother, who was deaf and illiterate. His father died in the First World War when he was less than one year old. Albert grew up surrounded by working-class pieds noirs, people of French descent born in Algeria. At a young age, one of his teachers instilled in him a love of literature, and when he contracted tuberculosis at 17, his illness inspired some of his first writings. He soon began putting his literary prowess to task as a journalist, and in 1940, with World War II underway, authorities shut down the left-wing newspaper he was working for and he moved to Paris with his second wife, Francine. Their marriage lasted until Camus' death, but it was marked by infidelity. His relationship with actress Maria Casares lasted more than 15 years. In France, he wrote for Combat, a clandestine newspaper of the French resistance. And in the post-war years, he remained devoted to activism, condemning, for example, the bombing of Hiroshima and calling for a multicultural Algeria with equality for Pienois and Arabs. He broke with the left-wing intellectual circles of the day following his critiques of communism, a break that ended his relationship with Jean-Paul Sartre and left him isolated. Writers work in solitude. They're judged in solitude. And they judge themselves in solitude. It's neither good nor healthy. Eventually the day comes when writers need to see a human face and feel human companionship. He found this companionship in the theatre, to which he kept returning throughout his life. With his plays The Misunderstanding and Caligula, his essay The Myth of Sisyphus, and his now world-famous novel, The Stranger, Camus developed his uniquely optimistic take on absurdism, showing readers that comfort can be found in the futility of life. Other works followed, The Plague, The Fool, The Just Assassins, and in 1957, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature at just 44, becoming its second youngest recipient ever behind Rudyard Kipling. Maybe they wanted to show that France sometimes has a younger side to it than we usually think. Camus was never to reach the prime of his life. Three years later, on the 4th of January 1960, he died in a car accident. France and the world as a whole mourned for one of the century's greatest literary minds and a man who redefined what it meant to be free. Vincent Duclair, hello. Thank you very much for being with us. Now let's start with Albert Camus' posthumous comeback. Are you surprised that the plague seems to have become the novel for now? I wasn't really surprised because the plague is not only about fighting Nazism, it's not only about the resistance, but it's also an allegory for what men are capable of when they work together, when faced with unthinkable and seemingly unsurmountable challenges. 
à des défis, à des, des situations qui les dépassent. Et je crois que the si plague caught our attention at the start of the pandemic, when lockdown began in countries across the world, because Camus was showing us that we have to accept unprecedented situations and steal ourselves against them, even if they seem absurd. Que, que l'on n'imaginait pas euh, qu'il fallait euh, s'y préparer et, et accepter donc le, des formes d'absurdité. Euh, Il a aussi fait une forte case euh, que there will be ways out of it if we fight for them. Que l'on pouvait combattre, que l'on pouvait obtenir des victoires. That we can have little victories, certes, even if they're temporary. Même, euh, and that this shows us euh, the best side of humanity and society. And of course, he became one of the youngest people to ever receive the Nobel Prize for Literature. But it wasn't an easy victory for him. Why not? He won the Nobel Prize at a time when he had writer's block. He'd been struck by the violence he'd seen. So when he managed to get his book, The Rebel, published, it was a very important moment for him because it was a philosophical defense of standing up to oppressive systems, particularly the dictatorships imposed by the USSR and Eastern Europe. Euh, donc imposé par, par l'URSS en, en Europe de l'Est. Donc, Mais by the time he won the prize, là, dans une, he was depressed because he'd been rejected by a large part of the French literary and intellectual scene. littéraire français, il doutait. He doubted himself. Il avait même le sentiment. He felt like an imposter. Et tout d'un coup, and then suddenly he gets a Nobel Prize. Et, euh, on disait de People said that despite the prize, as a writer. He was finished. Eventually, though, winning it meant he found his confidence again. And it let him see how far he'd come from being an impoverished child in Algiers. So he started writing again and was almost able to finish his final masterpiece, The First Man. And even as he went to receive his prize in Stockholm, he was heckled by an Algerian student over his stance regarding the war in Algeria. Uh, let's take a beat now and a closer look at Camus' tumultuous yet crucial relationship with his home country. In this bookstore in Algiers, you don't need to search for long to find the works of Albert Camus. The author is still widely read here, especially by students. But the relationship between Algerians and the writer is complex. It is clear that the figure of Albert Camus is divisive. That's to say, he's not really considered a defender of the Algerian cause. Not at all, actually. We as Algerians have a lot of reservations about Camus. It's true that we read his work, we admire it because of its spirit. But for me personally, I find that he missed the boat. He missed history. A long supporter of French and Muslims living together, he never took sides in the struggle for Algeria's independence. Because of what he witnessed, he did not take the side of independence advocated by the National Liberation Front like others inside the party did. So he knew the movement well, except that very quickly, inside the FLN, by more or less legitimate means, they advocated something akin to a mono-ethnic, mono-religious Algeria. Opposed to the FLN, Camus had other political beliefs. During his youth in the 1930s, he was involved in the anti-fascist movement. His membership, although short-lived in the French Communist Party, was a fight against colonialism. Camus remained a staunch anti-colonialist. In 1939, in a series of articles, Camus denounced the living conditions of native Algerians, prompting the wrath of the colonial power. He was forced to leave Algeria the same year. In 1956, Algeria was still in the midst of its war of independence, and he launched in Algiers an appeal for a civil truce. The following year, while receiving the Nobel Prize in Literature, he answered a student who challenged him on the Algerian question, reportedly saying, I must also condemn a terrorism which is exercised blindly in the streets of Algiers, for example, and which one day may strike my mother or my family. I believe in justice, but I will defend my mother before justice. Critics accused Camus of expressing a colonialist attitude. It's a sentiment that persists still today in Algeria, 
in spite of the country being grateful for his literature. Now, Vincent Duclair, Camus faced rejection on both sides of the Mediterranean uh, over his stance regarding Algeria. Was he on the wrong side of history? He wasn't on the wrong side of history. Camus wanted to give Algeria a chance, and he opposed war. He understood the risk of extreme violence, spoke out against it, and called for a truce between the two communities so they could try and imagine a future together. Camus argued that these communities share the same land, and deep down, they have a shared culture. He tried to show that there was an Algerian identity that transcended different communities. And I think he was right to think about how communities can coexist, how they can create a society. And today, I can fully appreciate the importance of Camus and his ideas about Algeria and the impact they've had on other writers and artists. And how much did Camus' illness and poor childhood also color his political and philosophical stances? So his illness, the tuberculosis he got when he was young, stopped him playing football. And it stopped him competing for prestigious qualifications in philosophy. And that made his life feel precarious. He felt the presence of death. He was haunted by it. So there was this urgency within him, a drive to create, a drive to move forward, and even to love. His struggle to overcome this illness left him both very vulnerable and very strong. And the fact that he was born into such poverty meant he remained very humble. But behind this veneer, he was both a fragile and a strong man. And that's what makes Camus extremely precious and extremely strong. Vincent Duclair, thank you very much. And with that, we leave this edition. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned and stay safe.